Hey everyone, I am in an outdoor classroom right now in Seattle and it is a beautiful day. I feel like I have not seen the sun in ages. The birds are chirping and I am just so excited to be out here with you all today exploring and discovering. There are so many different components to this outdoor classroom that I want to share with you, but the one that we're going to be talking about directly today is going to be the discovery table. And this discovery table, I think of as a Reggio Provocation Center, where children can come, explore, discover, and it provokes their imagination, it provokes their learning and their desire to wonder. And I love having these a part of my outdoor classroom because I like that it bridges the gap between whatever we're learning in our curriculum into a child-led way. So I have these all the time at my classroom. We might have them out for a week. We might have them out for four weeks. We might have them out for six weeks. It depends on what the children are interested in and what we're focusing on our, in our curriculum. So I want to take you through the steps that I have when I'm setting up a provocation and how I'm inspired by the children to set up my curriculum in order to follow their lead. So let's go in and dive into it today. So the first step in creating a discovery table is observing and listening to what the children are interested in. And this can be a hard step because honestly, children talk about a lot of stuff in your classroom. I know <laughs> they have a lot of interests. They have a lot of questions and it can be really hard and challenging to know which one you really want to focus on. So what I end up doing is I document whatever they're thinking in a journal. Um, and then I use this documentation to talk to parents about whatever I'm hearing the children are interested in. I use this for their learning to just like know where they're at in their learning. But I use this also for my curriculum development. So if I'm noticing children are making mud kitchen pies a lot in our classroom and they're talking about sharing and they're talking about how they want to give each other something that might light something up in my brain and I'll jot that down for some type of curriculum and maybe weave that in some way. If I'm hearing children are noticing that there are, you know, differences in the trees now because it's springtime and you can start seeing that the buds are swelling. I'll write down that thought into my journal. Or if a child is, let's say, like moving mulch and they're talking about how they're being an arborist because we have a lot of arborists at the Arboretum, I'll write down that thought. So there's a lot of thinking that goes along with my curriculum development and it does take a lot of space and time sometimes, but once I get into the rhythm of observing, I find so much joy in it because I can listen to really see what the children are interested in and it allows me to understand where their learning is at and where I can help support and scaffold any learning that I might want to do or model anything that I might need to do as well, you know? So this is a crucial part to my curriculum development. If you want more about this, I did make a video on it and I'll link it above for you all, but I didn't want to go into too much detail because honestly, this is all about setting up a discovery table and I don't want us to spend the whole time thinking about our curriculum, which is so important and so valuable. But anyways, so once I have an understanding about what the children are interested in, I can go on to step two. So step two is honestly one of my favorite things because it helps me to really think creatively and what I want to offer the children and how I want to interweave their interest into my curriculum and how I can set up this discovery table to like inspire their play. So this step is by far my favorite and what I start off by doing is making a mind map and taking all the documentation that I wrote in my journal and talking to my co-teacher if I have one and sitting down with them and sharing what we've seen the children are interested in and what they're talking about and this will inspire us to think about our curriculum and how we want to weave it together. So let's go off the example of the children saying that they're interested with winter buds because that's something that's happening in the natural world. I'm seeing it a lot in my classroom. We're talking about trees. I want to set up a discovery table based on that and follow that curriculum line down. So. I could get the arborist to come in and show us things about trees and the health of trees on nature walks. We can look at trees and look at the different branching that they have, act like trees and think about what happens in the springtime with trees. There's so many things that this can like inspire, right? So this will be my point of entrance in a discovery table is really thinking about the tree life 
and how I can incorporate that into my discovery table. So now it's time to gather all the materials and I'm going to be thinking about what I want to offer on this discovery table. So we're going to look at the trees, we're going to talk about trees. So I'm going to think about what I can gather that's in the natural world, what materials I might want to add that are tool based, and if there's any ID, or if the, and if there's any ID, um, books that I might want to add to the table or anything like that that might inspire them to look further in on their questions. So I'm going to go gather those things and then I'll meet you back at the discovery table. Okay, so this is the discovery table. It is a nice flat area. We love this because it's nice and long and children can enjoy it all together. So I have a few things that I have gathered here at the classroom space. I have gathered some flowers that we have some mulch or moss, some branches, some different parts of the tree. And I'm going to start planning out how I want this to look. So I'm not really going to speak about this until at the end. So you can watch me set this up. came up with with my limited time that I had I have a bowl of different parts of the tree that I found in my area I put this out here if the children wanted to make any art with their materials I also found some different branches I would definitely want something a little bit taller for the base but I wanted them to get a sense of like the different parts of the trees when it comes to branches. I have one of these things because they love these things so much. It came from the game, game Sneaky Snacky Squirrel, so we love it. Um, I put this out here if the kids wanted to explore picking up any of the nuts with it. I also found some flowers because we have so many rhododendrons in bloom. I found a magnifying glass that they can use to look at the bark pieces that I found, and then a tree book that has the different parts of the trees in it, and then what happens during each season that they could look around at as well. So this is just what I came with, up with. So you did all the work. This is your last and final step. You made it here. You created a beautiful space for children to explore and now you have to observe again. So during this time, I like to think about what the children are noticing about the discovery table and jotting those things down. Any questions that they're having that is sparked because of the discovery table, I'm going to write those questions down or comments down. If I'm noticing that children are asking for different or more materials, that tells me that we can go for a nature walk and gather more materials to add to the discovery table that is related to trees. If I'm noticing that children are not at all interested in my discovery table, that lets me know that I need to change some things about it to incorporate their play into the discovery table. So if children are interested in making animal homes, I might want to add more plastic animals into my discovery table to help support them. So it's really just a learning process. It's an ebb and a flow. You got to like figure out what they're interested in and how you can add those things in and what they're not interested in, take those things out. And you will start to understand the children in your classroom a little bit more just by taking the time to just set up a discovery table because this will allow you to see what they're interested in and ways that you can support that in your classroom. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you again next time. Have a great rest of your day and sending so much light and gratitude to you all. Bye.